to my beautiful girls. I'm going to respond in two parts. In the first part, I want to talk to you about the journey and the battle, then our destiny. This has not been an easy life for us, but we do have purpose. I'm beyond proud of you both for standing up, exposing yourselves in a real raw way. It's seldom seen in life and I want to thank you for that. Your letters have been incredibly painful. They keep me up at night and I'm not fully equipped to give you the answers you most likely seek. I thought it would be helpful for us to remember how much ground we've covered on this journey to freedom. I didn't just wake up one day, see our misery, get a divorce and we were free. I had to fight for years against the dragon that held us captive almost 18 years to be exact. That enemy wasn't going to let us go without a fight. And fight we did. You both have shared some of our story. Let me continue it here. We left your father in September 1999. As a family, we had gone to a female counselor at a Catholic clinic. At that visit, she told me that it would be good to seek a divorce, although she had compassion for your father. She did tell me that your dad had already begun a campaign to keep Brooke with him. Her prediction was true. Brooke did stay with your father in our family home. Britt came with me to a small apartment. That December, Britt came to me and told me she was moving in with you and your dad. On December 8, 1999, I received a call from the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. Your father was arrested for backhanding your sister and leaving a bruise and swelling on her face. I was asked to come to his home and pick you both up. The divorce was final in January 2000. The decree gave me and your father joint custody. On January 28, 2000, I received the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office report. The report indicated that after Brooke was struck on the face, Brooke walked downstairs to see what the commotion was about and that your father threw her into a wall and told her to stay out of it. It was also disclosed that Brittany had told the police about the sexual abuse between her and her father. A temporary restraining order was placed against your father. For a short time, I had you both back with me. The Clackamas County Sheriff's Office sent you to CARES. That's a child avoid abuse response and evaluation service. You were put, put through a rig- rigorous interview process were given physicals, and were assigned to counseling sessions. Brooke returned to her father for a short time when he lived in Portland, but did go back and forth. I can be sure of that because I still have a letter dated June 20th, 2001, where Brooke's father's attorney, Phil Gilbert, writes, Mr. White reports that your client, Miss Jody White, has on more than one occasion failed to allow him to have scheduled parenting time. My fight for you both continued. In February 2002, I opened Harmony Star, the restaurant you mentioned. That was an attempt to give you and your sister a place to hang with your friends. It was opened as a coffee shop, restaurant, and underage karaoke club on the weekends for teenagers. We enlisted your friends, remodeled it for a couple of months, and finally opened our dream. The night before we were ready to open, Brooke went MIA. I had the police department searching until we found her early the next morning. In February 2003, Harmony Star was closed. I did not drink this entire year. During this time, you both stayed home mostly with me. Brooke had her horse and the 4-H girls and the barn. We spent a great deal of time driving back and forth from the barn. 
Britt has now met Tyler and both begin a heroin battle. I do various remedial actions, like standing outside of Tyler's door at 2 a.m., but nothing much worked to keep them apart in those days. I received paperwork from your father's attorney on October 16th, 2003. The paperwork is asking to grant primary legal and physical custody of the party's child, Brooke. He also asked that his child support for both of you be suspended. Brooke now moves to Battleground to live full time with her dad. I call the Battleground School District and tell them you are enrolled, introduce myself, and ask that I be called any time you miss school. I want to stay close to you, so I buy you a box and tell you I will send cards weekly at your dad's. I want you to gather these cards and keep them in this saved special box under your bed. Not too long after Brooke moves to Battleground, the school calls me and says she's missed several days. I leave work, drive to her father's house in the woods, and she's there home alone. She asked me how I knew she was not in school. We chat. She tells me her father raged the night before. I ask if she'd like to pack up her things and come back with me. She does. Brooke stays with me and her sister for a short time before returning to Battleground. Britt is struggling with heroin, but I don't know how deep the battle is yet. Your dad has lost the big house he had and now is in an apartment. Brooke, you stay mostly with your best friend and her family. I learned that this family drives you and their daughter to meth houses and that you're using meth. I prepare a restraining order against them and a circuit court judge agrees and signs it. That wasn't very easy because we've been family friends for 20 years, but I still have them served. I also bring you to meet a superior court judge hoping that he can talk some sense to you about the repercussions down the road. Britt turns 18 and we're living on S Street. I'm still not fully aware of her heroin problem. She stays in her room and doesn't make waves. You return home with us after the restraining order was served. One night, you jump out the upstairs window because your father has brought, bought you a ticket for you and your friend to go to Hawaii with a doubt, without adult supervision. I call the airport security and tell them I did not give my permission. The airport security stops and tells them you are not allowed to go, but your father intervenes and lets you. Britt comes to me and shows me her track marked arms and asks for help. We find an extensive inpatient three month rehab center in California and put her on a plane. Brooke has been working with an ex-boyfriend of mine on her math and she's working on getting her GED completed. We decide to move to Colorado with him for two reasons. You want to move there and your sister could not return to Portland because of the heroin problem. This is just one small part of our journey.